Hey guys, Mr. BXRP here and welcome back. Uh, please hit the subscribe button before we get rolling and the notifications button if you want to be notified when my next video comes available. Uh, today is May 19th of 2020 and let's get rolling into it. So I'm looking at Coin Paprika and just a quick update. Bitcoin's at 97.25, Ethereum's at 213 and XRP's about 20 and a half cents. Uh, the seven day Bitcoin's up 10%, Ethereum is up uh, almost 12%, and XRP is up almost 3%. So I am going to jump over to a tweet I did about um, coin market cap. So I did this on May 16th, and here's what I said I said there are 5,474 projects on coin market cap. The top 10 projects make up 90% of the total market cap. Trying to pick a winner in the other 5,464 projects is like trying to find a needle in a needle stack. Um, and, and, you know, it's just incredibly difficult. I mean, you've always heard a needle in a haystack, right? Well, I got news for you. It's harder to find a specific needle in a needle stack. And that was, that was my point of saying that. It's just so hard. I mean, 90% of the projects are at the top 10. So it's really hard. I mean, some people will pick them. It's hard to do. But, um, but, but here's the interesting part of this tweet. It's not, it's not what I said. It's what CoinMarketCap said because they responded to me. So let me go down here. And they said, replying to Mr. BXRP, Hi, I just wanted to clarify. Active projects are in the 2000 range on CoinMarketCap. The 5000 figure includes all listing types, active, unverified, inactive, and untracked listings. For more specific info on each listing tier, please see section B-3. And then they've got a link here, and they say thanks. Well, that's all good, and I'm glad they clarified it, but what they really need to do is clean up all that garbage. I mean, if they can't confirm that they're active projects, it's time to clean house. Get that garbage off of there. I mean, you got people looking at that stuff and, and using that information you know, to invest in those projects. And they may be, you know, look, if they're not active, it's probably hard to invest in them, but you might still be able to buy them from somebody and you might not want to if you knew they weren't active. So don't want to beat a dead horse. Wanted to show that to you. I think they need a clean house. Um, CZ Binance recently bought CoinMarketCap, so hopefully he will clean it up, but we will see. All right, moving on. This was from Michael at VAL5Link, uh, and it says, March 6, 2020, the new patent filing on Google Patent states BO, BO, BOA, Bank of America, will adopt the power of the Ripple blockchain within the new interbank settlement and communication system. Okay, look, I've been here nearly three years. I'm just about at three years, and this is fantastic news, but we all have known for the last three years that Bank of America is involved with Ripple, period, and there's constant um, uh, evidence to this fact. We've seen other patents that alluded to to using Ripple uh, and also Leonidas had posted this and I'm going to play it real quickly and this is actually Emi Yoshikawa and, and here's what here's what Leonidas said and follow Leonidas. He's at Leo and I can't say his name H-A-D-J-I-L-O-I-Z-O-U Follow him on Twitter if you don't already. I'm sure you already do, but if you don't follow him. So this is from Emmy and Emmy uh, Yoshikawa. She's actually the Senior Director of Global Operations Ripple. So she is, uh, she's a Ripple employee. Hear what she says in this video that Leo just posted uh, today. Access and provides quick settlement and near zero failure rates and also a substantial reduction in costs. Today, we have over 300 customers across 40 markets, and ranging from uh, large global banks like Santander and Bank of America to traditional money transfer business like MoneyGram, and also more newer fintech type companies like Neil. Okay, so look, there's it's no more rumor. She just said Bank of America is a customer. Okay, so now there'll be a big group of people out there who'll go, yeah, but they're not using XRP. It doesn't mean they're going to use XRP. Listen, if 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 I were invested in XRP and I didn't think that Bank of America was going to want to save 70% on sending money overseas or cross borders, I probably wouldn't be invested in XRP. You have to ask yourself, do you think they want to save money or not? 
and, and you'll answer your own question. So, so, so for those who can't see past today, you've got to be logical. I mean, imagine you run a business and suddenly you can, in one part of your business, probably the, one of the most expensive parts of your business, you can save, and it's been estimated 30 to 70%, but we've heard a lot of people say 70%. You could save 70%. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to save 70%. I mean, they're literally going to be able to, and this was told to me by David Schwartz, they're literally going to be able to look at their computer screen and press A to send money, uh, to, press A to, to, to message the sending of money and use their existing Nostro system, or B, send money through ODL and save up to 70%, and it's, it's not going to cost them hardly anything at all. So just ask yourself what they're going to do, and you'll answer your own question. So that's fantastic news, and, and it's just more evidence. We've been waiting to hear, you know, some formal big announcement that's that that you know we've heard was supposed to come out. Hopefully, it happens sometime in the near future. But we but we carry on. Okay, this video that was retweeted by Mac Attack, and I'm sorry I don't have Mac's uh, tweet here, but but this is what Mac had done. Uh, it's it's a humpback whale, and I'm telling you, when I saw this whale come out of the water, it, it reminded me of something. I'm going to tell you what in a second. Look at that thing move. Okay, so you're like, well, Mr. B, why are you showing us a whale come out of the water? Well, let me tell you what that whale reminds me of. That whale reminds me of, on my phone this morning, I found a picture. And I, I posted on Twitter just about an hour ago. I found this pic on my phone, but unfortunately I don't have a specific date this occurred. It's an excellent reminder of how XRP can really move. And this is what reminded me of that whale. Is XRP moved 64.45% in 24 hours. Now, I believe this is September 21st of 2018. I, I, I need to get onto the charts and confirm, but I'm pretty, pretty sure that was the date. For those of you that weren't there, I wanted you to see that it's possible. For those of you who you, <laughs> those of you who were there, I know you're probably angry because you probably didn't take profits. But the point is that you know Bitcoin was only up four percent that day, and Ethereum was only up eight percent, and Bitcoin Cash was only up twelve percent, EOS was up twelve, Stellar had a good day, twenty five percent, Litecoin seven, but XRP almost sixty five percent. So. When XRP moves, it can move hard, but you know it doesn't move often. But when it does, you have to pay attention. Now, that's all good, but that's based on a you know some sort of a bull run, and and this was a was a bull run going on at the time. It wasn't a huge bull run, but I think it was a short bull run. But but obviously, most people are here for for the mass adoption of XRP, the long term mass adoption. So so that's why I'm here. I'm not here for these bull runs, but but. I do know a lot of people are going to want to take profits when these bull runs occur. And for those who never saw it, I wanted you to see how possible it is. It's happened before, and it will likely happen again. Okay, another one from Michael at VAL5Link. Back, a cryptocurrency platform owned by Intercontinental Exchange, ICE, has secured a custody business within, uh, its custody business with an additional $500 million insurance policy as its institutional client list is growing. Okay, so, so one of the things you would expect from a company called backed is you would expect to be backed up with insurance and they are going to back up their clients with insurance and I challenge all of the all of the exchanges out there to insure our, any crypto holdings that any of their customers have on their exchanges and you know some people say oh yeah well so and so has insurance well I got news for you if you start reading the fine writing doesn't mean you're going to be covered. I mean, they may cover their assets first and then you, you know, so it's never really been clear. And I got news for you. The fact that they don't lead with that advertising, like, and I don't want to point anyone out because because I don't think anyone's doing a fantastic job in that arena. But the moment that ABC exchange leads with the following advertisement, your crypto assets are insured 100%. Okay, until they do that, they're not doing a great job. So we need to see our stuff get insured absolutely 100%. Um, and, and I look forward to that in the future and, and we'll see. Hopefully there'll be, there'll be other companies that will, that will offer that. And, and it's a, what a tremendous opportunity for somebody to have a business that can do that. Um, I mean, it just seems like a huge, huge, huge opportunity and, and could be part of what PolySign's doing. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Oh, you know what, well, well quick little point I wanted to bring up to you. Um, Jerry Hall, and if you don't follow Jerry Hall, follow him on Twitter. He also has a YouTube channel. Follow his YouTube channel 
Jerry just really started working on his YouTube channel um, steadily. Jerry is a really smart guy, guys. You should listen to Jerry. He does short videos. Um, he, he should have a lot more following than he has, so I, I really ask you guys to follow him. He and I had a conversation over the weekend, and we were talking about Ripple loans. And, and Jerry had an interesting um, uh, speculation about what the loans might be about or one of the uses for the loans. He had suggested that the loans could be a bridge so that um, so that banks and financial institutions can buy XRP to move their money without bringing home their Nostro accounts just yet until they've actually done it for a little while. So some sort of a bridge so that they can then bring home their Nostro account. So maybe they might use both methods for a little while before they go ahead and, and pull off the Band-Aid and, 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 and pull that Nostro money back. So I thought that was an interesting concept. Uh, you know, Nobody's really, really clear on exactly what it is. And anybody that says they are really clear on what it is, they don't know what they're talking about because it's still not clear. Uh, and it could be 10 different things, I and mean, we don't really know. But I thought that was an interesting angle, and I thank Jerry for sharing it with me, and I think it was fantastic. Moving on, this was from XRP Crypto Wolf. Uh, the, uh, the hashtag cryptocurrency, hashtag XRP bull run, and what always happens after every Bitcoin halving. XRP community, please check out my very first COIL article and follow my COIL blog. I'd really appreciate all kinds of constructive feedback from everyone. Thank you. Hey. Please follow um, at Crypto Wolf at XRP Crypto Wolf on Twitter, and everybody check out his Coil blog. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to this afternoon, and I thank him for always sharing information with me, and and I do look forward to reading his blog, and hope he does really well with it. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on. All right, Roger Ver posted this. I reread the Bitcoin white paper today. It doesn't seem to be describing Bitcoin at all. Well, I agree 100%. So Roger had highlighted a couple things. And he highlighted a version of electronic cash, one party to another, right? He's suggesting that's not happening, and I agree. Uh, commerce on the internet. Well, I don't think people are buying commerce on the internet either. Um, electronic payments. Um, and what else? What is needed um, in an electronic payment system allowing two willing parties to transact directly? Um, I guess they could do that, but but they're not. I mean, I've always said this. If you just read the first line, you can see the failure in Bitcoin. And look, I'm not attacking Bitcoin, guys. I mean, I, you know, I'm just reading this and, and comparing it to their use case. And it's only because Roger made this post. This, is, this isn't about attacking Bitcoin in this video. But it says, a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Well, nobody's using it peer-to-peer. And you need a financial institution to buy it, and you need a financial institution to sell it. And I know everyone says, well, I'm not going to sell my crypto when, when the price goes up. Well, I got news for you. All your creditors right now still take your fiat currency to pay your bills, with the exception of a couple. But, but the point is, right now you still need fiat. So until you can pay your bills with your with your digital assets, you're going to have to get back to cash. So, so I, I think it was interesting that Roger pointed that out. And he's an early Bitcoin investor. Um, he's an XRP investor. And uh, obviously, Bitcoin Cash is his baby. All right, moving on. Uh, I want to revisit this. Somebody retweeted this. And for some reason, I don't have who retweeted, retweeted it. But, but it popped up on my screen today or yesterday. Um, and I thought it was really interesting. So it said, with RippleNet, financial institutions can leverage advanced blockchain technology, enabling instant payments across the globe. So, you know, one of the things, one of the other use cases of XRP is imagine that you're an American and you're traveling to Paris and you buy something in Paris with your credit card. And by the way, if you ever go to Paris and you're an American, just know their credit card machine's broken. <laughs> Everywhere I went in Paris, um, their credit card machine was broken. But let's just say hypothetically, you could get them to take a credit card. Um, that merchant doesn't get paid instantly. They get paid on a cycle, right? So it might take them 30 days to get paid. Well, with the use of XRP, Ripple is in a position, or any other company that uses XRP, they're in a position to get merchants paid instantly. How amazing would that be for the merchant to get paid instantly? And that's a use case we don't talk about very much, but instant payments is fantastic. It changes people's businesses. I mean, it makes you it makes you more profitable daily. You don't have to wait monthly to get your money and, and, and pay your bills and make orders and do things. 
it's fantastic. So I, I'm glad somebody reposted that. I thought it was great. Um, let me check my my uh, my notes here. Other things I want to go over. Okay. I think that's it. So last thing I want to say is um, this was posted on Twitter from Fact, and it said, find three hobbies. One to make you money, one to keep you in shape, and one to keep you creative. And I thought that was a, that was a fantastic uh, tweet. So I wanted to, uh, if you haven't subscribed, guys, and you like my video, please subscribe now before you leave. I wanted to uh, tell you guys I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a podiatrist, and I'm not a crypto expert. These are my opinions only. Don't make any financial decisions based on anything I say. This video is intended for entertainment purposes only. Please like and subscribe and hit the notifications button and share my videos with anybody who you think might appreciate them. And everyone have a fantastic day.